Greetings to all. Welcome to Future of Business Academy. Today we are going to see daily current affairs of 11th May 2024. To get more daily current affairs videos, follow our YouTube channel, also our Telegram channel. Now we'll move on to the today's topics. Today we are going to see the important topics of 11th May. The first topic is Nation Commission for Women, and the second topic is Right to Education. Here, these both topics covers under the GS2 paper in the examination. Now, we'll have a detailed analysis about, about these two topics. Our first topic is National Commission for Women. What is this National Commission for Women is about? Under the National Commission for Women Act 1990, this National Commission for Women have been established it is an statutory body we it was created by judicial and constitutional reform so when the act is made under the constitutional reforms we know that it is the statutory body it was created to guarantee women in india a just and equal standard of living also, the injustice and atrocities that women have endured throughout the years have made it necessary to protect their welfare. The National Commission for Women is the highest authority in nation tasked with ensuring equal rights for women. Also, it has been established in the year 1992 January. It has some of the objectives. What are those objectives? Reviewing the legal and constitutional protections for women. It is one of the objectives. Next, by recommending corrective legislative measures then to assist in the resolution of complaints and advise the government on all issues pertaining to policy that impact women. The commission worked to promote women's economic empowerment and improve their status accordance with the mandate. Also, this commission have prepared gender profiles to evaluate the status of women and their empowerment after concluding its visit to all states and union territories. In this, the exception is Lakshadweep. Also, it addressed the problem of child marriage, organized legal education campaigns, organized parivaric mahila lok adals and strengthened and improved laws like National Commission for Women Act 1990, Women Act 1990, the Indian Penal Code 1860, then the Dowry Prohibition Act of 1961 and the PNDT Act of 1994. So, these are the sum of laws strengthened by this National Commission for Women. Also, in order to raise awareness in society about these social evils, it conducted seminars and workshops on gender awareness, convened workshops on consultations, formed expert committees on economic empowerment of women, and launched public awareness campaigns against female forticide, violence against women, and etc so before this we have to know how the detailed brief history of this national commission for women have been established so the committee on the status of women in india which was established in 1971 suggested that national commission to be established specifically for women to carry out monitoring duties which would help with grievance redress and has not women's socio-economic advancement. Also, the Committee on Status of Women in India was established in India's Government Ministry of Education and 
social welfare to conduct research on the current country's women's situation. The ministry was responsible to request from the UN for the status report on women's for International Women's Year. The central government consulted experts, social workers and non-governmental organizations in 1990 about the proposed commission composition, duties and other aspects. The government made a number of changes and added new classes in August 1990 to give the commission the authority of civil court. Also, on August 30, 1990, the bill was approved and the president signed it. On January 31, 1992, the first commission was established with Mrs. Jayanti Patnaik serving as its chair. Now, what the, does this mission carry to work together, granting women the opportunity to attain equality? It is one of the major mission of this commission also to ensure that she has the opportunity to participate equally in all aspects of life by protecting her rights and entitlements through appropriate policy development, legislative action, efficient law enforcement and program policy implementation. By creating plans for resolving particular issues or circumstances brought on by prejudice and crimes against women, it has some of the visions that Indian woman is completely empowered to exercise her rights and entitlements, feels safe both inside and outside her home and has the chance to participate equally in all spheres of society. So this was the main vision. The next vision is the Nations Commission for Women's Constitution. Next, the National Commission for Women will be established by the central government to carry out the task delegated to it by this act and exercise authority granted to it. Now, what are the, some of the functions of this National Commission of Women? To look into and assess any issues regarding the protections afforded to women by constitution and other laws. Next function is periodical review the current provisions of the constitution and other laws that impact women. Also to make recommendations for amendments to address any gaps, insufficiencies or shortcomings in these laws. Also to bring up instances where the constitution provision and other laws pertaining to women have been broken with the relevant authorities. So these are the some of the functions of National Commission for Women. What are the government efforts done in this National Commission for Women? So under the constitutional provisions we have in fundamental rights. Article 14 says that it ensures that all Indians have the right to equality. Next, Article 15 under Class 1, it says that state will not discriminate against any Indian based on gender. Then in Article Class 15, Class 3, it says that the state will make special provisions for women. These three comes under fundamental rights. Under fundamental duties, Article 51A, it guarantees that actions that violate women dignity will be opposed. And what are all the other acts and schemes are seen? Some of the acts and schemes are like Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act 2005, the Dowry Prohibition Act 1961, the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Act 2013, that is POSH Act. Next, the Protection of Children from Sexual Offense, that is POXO 2012 Act, Mission Shakti, Beti Bacho Beti Pado Scheme, One Stop Center Scheme, then Ujwala Scheme for Prevention of Trafficking and Rescue, Rehabilitation dating and reintegration of victims of trafficking and commercial sexual exploitation. Next is Swadhar Grih, a scheme for women in difficult circumstances. 
Next is Nari Shakti Purashkar. Next, Mahila Police Volunteers, Mahila Shakti Kendras, Nirbhaya Fund. Also, the government of India had set up a dedicated fund called the Nirbhaya Fund for implementation of initiatives aimed at enhancing the safety and security of women in the country. That's all about our Nation Commission for Women. The next topic is right to education. Under this right to education act, we are going to see what are the constitutional provisions it has, its significance, responsibilities of the government, issues and challenges and the amendments. So under the amendment act 86th, 86th amendment act of 20, 2002, this right to education have been introduced. So it has some of the constitutional provisions which is under Article 21A, which comes under fundamental rights. It says that right to education to all children between the ages of 6 to 14 must receive free and compulsory education from the state in accordance with any legal requirements that the state may establish. Next, under the Article 45, which comes under DPSP, it says that all children must receive early childhood care and education from the state until they turn six. Next, under the article 51, 51A, which comes under fundamental duties, it says that right to education act, also known as the right to children to free and compulsory education act was passed in 2009 in order to implement article 21A. Next, what are the significance provided for this right to education? Right to elementary education that is both free and required. Also, every child in neighborhood school has the right to free compulsory education between the ages of 6 to 14 years. Also, the children older than 6 who is not enrolled in school or who was not able to finish school must be placed in class appropriate for his age. Even if the child is older than 14, elementary education must be provided at no cost until the end of the program. Also, no child can be kept behind in school, expelled or made to pass a board exam before finishing elementary school. Now, what are the responsibilities of the government? We have central government responsibilities, state government responsibilities. In central wise, it is important to establish a national advisory council to provide guidance to the government regarding the act implementation. Also to make a framework for the national curriculum by creating and implementing standards for teacher preparation. This comes under the central government responsibilities. Under state, what are all the responsibilities state does has? By offering elementary education to children aged 6 to 14 years on a free and mandatory basis. Also, it requires entrance, attendance and completion of elementary school guaranteeing the existence of nearby schools. It has some of the grievance redressal. What are those? The protection of rights granted by this act will be examined by the National Commission for the Protection of Child Rights. Also, it looks into compliance and carry try cases with the authority of civil court. To perform these duties, the relevant government may also establish a state commission for protection of children rights. Now, how it was implemented in under this act? By increasing the enrollment, also improvement of structure of school norms, also the 25% of giving quotas. In this way, the implementation can be done effectively. What are the issues seen here? The main issues are lack of specific penalties. Like if the government denies someone the opportunity to receive an elementary education, there are no particular consequences. The next issue is intermix of responsibilities. It is the responsibility of both local and state government to offer elementary education. 
that in both free and required if this duty is shared neither government might be held responsible next the lack of accountability of government schools also issues with private reservation have been also taking place and the conflict with other rights such as minority schools are subject to out of its acts provisions this might be opposition of article 30 of the constitution which permits minorities to establish and run educational institution also teaching multiple grades the act gives legitimacy to this method of instruction the number of teachers will not be determined by grade level but rather by total number of students now what are the amendments have been held under this rte act amendment act amendment act 2012 it says that it suggests home based education for kids with severe disabilities and placed disabled kids under the rte acts jurisdiction next the amendment act 2019 it says the policy of no detention in schools was eliminated up until class 8 no student may be detained under the acts in current provisions the states would have the final say over whether to keep the no detention rule in place so these are all the amendments also there are some of the better implementation for this RTE Act. What may be that? The responsible and interactive management by emphasis on the program for teacher training, also education for vocational purposes, budget enhancement by offering rewards for education. These are the better implementations of RTE Act. So that's all from our today's topics. To get this PDF download, you can download from our telegram channel the telegram channel's link will be provided in the description to get more videos follow our channel thank you